Welcome to Let's Go Dutch. I'm Veronica Lewis, and today we're in the capital of the Netherlands, Amsterdam. I'm gonna travel the world. I'm gonna go where the Dutch have been. And I'm gonna share it with you, my friends. Let's go Dutch. Let's go Dutch. Let's go Dutch. We'll stroll canals, canals, and more canals, and marvel at 400-year-old architecture. Sample some local cheese. Try some herring. We'll see some great works by the Dutch masters and visit the infamous red light district. So put on your clogs and let's go Dutch! The Netherlands lies on the northwestern coast of Europe. Also known as Holland, the capital and largest city is Amsterdam. I'm standing along the Amstel River. Yes, it's true. It's a river of light beer. And that's why around the year 1220, a bunch of herring fishermen built a dam here. The early settlement was called Amstella Dam, our dam on the Amstel. And that's why the Dutch make damn good beer. This is Dam Square, site of the original dam. This is the royal palace built in 1648, called Hetconeclec Palace. The design is neoclassical, and originally this was the Stadthaus, the town hall. The palace was given back to the city by Friedrich of Orange after the fall of Napoleon in 1813. The main hall is called the Burgesaal. The palace is where Friedrich signed a proclamation of Netherlands sovereignty and became King Willem I. The glory of Golden Age Amsterdam is on display in the palace and it's still used for royal functions. Across from the royal palace is the Neokirk. After being rebuilt several times due to fire, it reached its present self during the 1650s. That's 1650s. Yeah, it's the new church. You should see the old church. This is the Outer Kirk, the Old Church. This Gothic church dates from the 14th century. Saskia, the wife of Rembrandt, is buried in the Outer Kirk. Amsterdam is a city of canals and bridges. There are several tour boats that ply the canals. It's a fairly compact city, so it's great for walking. And there are also trams. But I say, let's go Dutch, so that means off the feet! Amsterdam has three semicircular canals, known as the Canal Ring. Digging of the canals began in 1607. They are the Heringgat, the Gentleman's Canal, the Kaisergat, the Emperor's Canal, and the Prinsengat, the Prince's Canal. Let's talk about the gables. 
the wealthy merchants built houses along the new canals. Some of the houses are quite narrow. That's because they were taxed based on the width of the property. So they built tall but narrow houses. They actually widen as they go back. This is a fine specimen of a step gable. It's one of the oldest styles and was popular from about 1580 to 1660. Check out the traditional shutters and the stained glass. It's very typical of these old step gables. we have a whole row of neck gables. The neck gable was introduced around 1640. Notice the year markings on the buildings. It's called an anno stain. Anno, of course, means year, and stain means stone. These gables are bell gables. Here are some spout gables. The buildings with the large shutters were formerly warehouses. The Dutch were master traders and these warehouses saw a lot of action in their day. The Baroque facades were built by the really wealthier merchants who emulated the French style. Walking around the city, there are two things you'll notice. The buildings have hooks hanging from the top, and some of them look like they're leaning forward. No, it's not because you smoke too much. Well, maybe it is. No, they really are leaning forward. The hooks at the top have a pulley system used to hoist furniture and things to the top floors. The buildings were built leaning forward so the furniture wouldn't hit the facade on the way up. Because the buildings are high and narrow, the steps can be extremely steep. Here's a particularly lovely spot with a line of ridges. We're going to have to come back here at night when it's all lit up. Two things the Dutch are known for, cheese and herring. Though I'm looking forward to sampling some aged Gouda. I'm not so excited about trying the raw herring, but Billy Eric is going to make me. There are herring stands all over the cities in Holland. I have to be honest with you, on the day of filming, it was a holiday and the herring stands were closed. Yay! But Billy Eric found a way to make me do it anyway. I'll have a bite if you have a bite. Yes, you, Billy Eric. You have to have a bite as well. That way there's less for me to eat. The 
Dutch word for cheese is kaas. There's no better place to sample some aged Gouda, and especially without it costing an arm and a leg. It's Gouda. No, really, it's Gouda. In Dutch, they pronounce it Houda. Try that back home. Go to your cheese counter and ask for some Gouda. The building behind me is the Rijks Museum. You cannot leave Amsterdam without stopping here. And what might we find in this neo-Gothic museum from 1885? The Rijks Museum is the National Museum. They have a treasure trove of Dutch masters. Everyone is represented here. Rembrandt, Jan Steen, Peter de Hoop, Franz Hals. They have Vermeer's The Little Street and The Milkmaid. But the star of the show is Rembrandt's Night Watch, painted in 1642. It's huge! It's great! And it's here! Right behind the Rex Museum is another museum devoted entirely to that other really famous Dutch painter. Hmm, what's his name? That's right, Van Gogh! The Van Gogh Museum has hundreds of paintings by Van Gogh. There are self-portraits and sunflowers. Self-portraits. The bedroom at Alls. Self-portraits. Irises. Self-portraits. And even lots more. Alrighty, let's Van Gogh riding. Did I mention there's a lot of bikes in Amsterdam? Ah, I see you've noticed the gable stones. Since house numbers and street names weren't introduced until the 19th century, in the 17th century, these gable stones and friezes identify the houses. Sometimes the owner's occupation or family name was depicted in the gable stone or the original function of the building. Over the former Jewish section known as the Josebert is the Zoutekirk, the South Church. Somewhere in the Josebert, a long time ago, there lived a guy trying to paint while the bells of the carillon were busy clanking. Remember that guy in the Rijks Museum with the huge painting? Yeah, right, Rembrandt. Well, the house behind me is none other than Rembrandt House. It was here that he lived and painted up until 1660 when he went bankrupt and his house and possessions were sold. This lovely area is called the Jordan. It's one of my favorite areas. We're at the corner of Prinsengrat, which means the Princess Canal, and Brouwersgrat, which means Brewer's Canal. Billy Eric, you painted this corner neat bar. Why don't you show us your painting? That double-sided step gable has a wonderful brown cafe inside.
Brown cafes are old, cozy neighborhood pubs. They're called brown cafes because the walls are stained from centuries of smoke. We'll come back here later on, but for now, if we head along Prinzenkrat, we'll come to the Vesterkirk. The Dutch Renaissance Vesterkirk, which means Western Church, dates back to 1630. It's important for several reasons. Rembrandt himself is buried here. For a long time, they didn't know where his grave was, but I believe they recently found it. He was hiding from the bill collectors. It was apparently a very good hiding place. The Vesterkirk is also important because gracing the top of the tower is the imperial crown of the Austrian Habsburg Empire. In 1489, Habsburg Emperor Maximilian granted Amsterdam the right to use the imperial crown in its coat of arms. And finally, the Vesterkirk is a Belangreke Kerk because it's Carillon was heard by a little girl in a secret annex just a few houses down. At number 263, Anne Frank wrote her now famous diary. She wrote about hearing the carillon of the Vesterkirk. Before we go further, I just want to mention that Amsterdam is a very misunderstood city. While there are all these lovely canals and bridges and golden age atmosphere, there's also a sinful side to Amsterdam. It's because of shops openly selling marijuana called coffee shops and also the legalized prostitution and the display of scantily clad hookers in the windows. I've arranged a little side trip back to 1614. Here we go. Pretty cool, huh? It feels like being inside a Vermeer painting. Maven Benin. Dinner will be served shortly. This is the Bach. Can you say that? Bach. This was the way house. It looks like a mini medieval fortress. At night, it looks really cool. Billy Eric, if I snap my fingers, you can edit us tonight, right? Here I go. can't twitch my nose like you, Sammy. But how did I do? Hey, how about a free outdoor showing of Swan Lake? Behind this giant church is a very old area. So old, in fact, it's called the Otazate. This is a quaint neighborhood that reeks of a time when the Dutch ruled the seas. Now, speaking of seas, this giant church you see behind me is the Sint Nicolaaskirk. Sint Nicolaas is a patron saint of mariners. 
Being a seafaring town, they built a church right on the edge of the old port to pray to St. Nick for a safe journey. Now speaking of St. Nick, that's right, none other than Santa Claus. Santa is Saint and Claus is Klaus, which is short for Nicholas. The Dutch call him Santa Claus. The typical red costume stems from the fact that Nick was a bishop. Windmills. These cute little buggers are another thing the Dutch are known for. But besides being nice souvenirs, the windmill is actually quite a machine. Because Holland is flat, the winds coming off the North Sea are one of the country's biggest natural resources. The Dutch put it to great use. First, they build a dike to close off the sea, and the windmills are used to scoop up the water and move it to a drainage canal. Eventually, the land dries out, and Holland is suddenly larger than before. The new land is called a polder, and the windmills used for drainage are called polder mills. There are also grain and flour mills, woodcutting, and other industrial windmills. Another thing you'll notice around the city, three X's. You're probably thinking Amsterdam is an X-rated city with scantily clad girls in the windows. Nay, nay, nay. It's the coat of arms of Amsterdam. Oh, and it's only R-rated. As night takes over Amsterdam, the lights get ready for their water ballet. The bridges reflecting in the canals are quite romantic. Dutch food can be surprisingly hard to find in Amsterdam. But boy, have I found a treat for you. It's the Faith Vliegen, the Five Flies. These five gables make up the restaurant. I want to warn you, there are so many incredible rooms in this restaurant. You'll wish you could experience dining in all of them. Let's find out about the strange name. For that, we turn to Albert Foreman. 1939, uh, a gentleman squatted the house and started a little antique shop. And he was really like a big storyteller. And above his antique shop was a little restaurant. And at a certain point, uh, the people who came to buy a tile or an antique glass uh, were spending hours here and had something to drink and something to eat. And it was such a good combination that Mr. Kruse, the founder of the restaurant, uh, bought four more houses and now he had a total of five houses at that point and uh, he found out that in 1627 uh, in the part at which he uh, had started his antique shop a man used to live and he was called Jan Jansson or in English John son of John which in Amsterdam was a very common name so they gave his Jan a nickname which was Fly because he was always on the road he was always flying around uh, we got four original Rembrandt etchings Glasses from the 17th century, Delft blue tiles from the 16th, oh. 17th, 18th century, armor from the 16th century. So it's really like having dinner in a culinary museum. Amsterdam is also a city of museums, lots of them. One very interesting museum is the Amstel Kring. Look at the row of houses across the canal. Can you spot which one has a hidden church? Neither can I. But somewhere in the attic, there's a church name, Our Lord in the Attic. No, really, that's what it's called, Onze Herr Solda. In 1578, when the Calvinist Protestants took over Amsterdam, they allowed Catholicism, as long as it was in private. Churches like this, hidden away in canal houses, flourished across the city. In need of a stroll through the park? Amsterdam's biggest park is Fondelpark. 
named for Jos van den Vondel, the Shakespeare of 17th century Holland. You can find a Vondel next to Museum Plein and the Rijksmuseum. Just in case I didn't mention it before, there's a lot of bikes in Amsterdam. I hope you've enjoyed our time in Amsterdam. I'm Veronica Lewis. Join us again next time on Let's Go Dutch as we take some wonderful day trips around Holland. Tot ziens! <laughs>